Yesterday. The film Toast is an exaggerated, yet sadly not by enough for it not to be somewhat depressing, semi-autobiographical film of UK film writer Nigel Slater's childhood. The characters in his childhood are moulded and intensified to fit the neat storyline of his childhood presented in the film. However, when watching it, one finds that even if only one-fifth of each parent, step-parent or gardener's demeanour or story is true, it's pretty tragic and heartbreaking. However, we know that Nigel Slater is alive and well, is successful and an utterly lovely individual, so in the end I suppose this slightly fictionalised version of his childhood doesn't need to be given such an upsetting rap from me. While the film is about Nigel's childhood, it is equally about how his love of food and cooking came to be. In a sense, it came to be through his deprivation of the act, with his mother practically being terrified of the exercise, and then his stepmother using it in competition with Slater as a means of expressing her love or perhaps just commitment to his father. Growing up on boiled tins of vegetables and other assorted foods, with toast as a steady and reliable backup plan if even they fail to make it to the table, Nigel learns to cook, much like Vernon from this beautiful fantastic which I've done previously in this series, as soon as he could reach the stove, because of his mother's lack of rather than excess of cooking ability. The film is full of nostalgic 1960s foodie favourites, aka parmesan that smelt like sick that came from a cardboard container, home decor, home economic classes and fashions. The food in the film is full of comforting mouthfuls straight out of a Delia Smith cookbook, made to perfection and used to gain control and an upper hand by Nigel's set mother. When veganising its contents, I truly felt like my grandma, but in a wonderful way, using plant over animal-based ingredients to achieve neat, orderly, rigid and perhaps even slightly uptight dishes that I grew up making from my mum's ancient woman's weekly cookbook. I no doubt relate to Nigel's love of cooking and wanting to impress his father with his own creations, because it's seemingly the only way he can make him happy or even remotely proud of him. However, when this desire to impress his dad becomes a toxic battle with his stepmom, ultimately resulting in his dad being fed to death, as the film alludes to, suddenly the love of cooking and feeding it to those you care for loses a heck of its magic. There are plenty of other non-food related reasons this film hits me deeply. The film is as much a coming of age story as it is about grief, loneliness and being misunderstood. It's about the often common reality of loving one parent more than the other, about holidays that while meant to be fun really just turned out to be an unnatural amount of time spent with your parents in rather boring circumstances, about how unfair it feels when you use your parents' reasoning against something they're insistent on, such as Nigel's class case against Mrs Potter, to absolutely no effect. Toast is in the funny, sad genre that other directors such as Taika Waititi seem to master pretty darn well. The sexual cleaning montages of Miss Potter vacuuming, dusting, polishing and scrubbing along with her unbelievably over-the-top trifles with peeled banana sticking out the top keep the film comical and pacey. However, the weighty loneliness of Nigel that is felt throughout the film constantly reminds audiences that much pain and longing hides below the exterior. Both the scenes when Nigel dances with his late mother's old dress and when he sits with his dad eating toast for dinner yet again, speak to this and reminds the viewer on how grief is in the tastes and textures that still exist once a loved one is gone. There's one final message in the film that I'd like to stress my appreciation for. The gardener Josh in the film tells nine-year-old Nigel that there are many things they'll tell you are dirty that are actually good for you. While this piece of advice is directed at Nigel's current non-existent tolerance for fresh food picked straight from the garden that has a speck of dirt on it or two, with the recurring seed planted in that Slater's sexuality may lie outside the hegemonic masculine norm, this piece of advice seems applicable to many deemed taboo things beyond specks of dirt on vegetables. I'm super excited to show you the recipes I chose to veganize in this film, Honey Bunches, as pretty much everything with some vegan goggles on looks outrageously delicious. So without further ado, here is toast, but vegan. Hey Honey Bunches, the first recipe is some chocolate rosemary scones. So um, Nigel, in his first home ec or food technology class, makes some sultana scones. And I just don't feel like we're all going to get mighty excited about sultanas in our scones, or just sultana scones in general. So these scones are rosemary chocolate. And you start with the base of flour, almond meal, baking powder, um, and some salt, and then some chopped dark chocolate or chocolate chips, and some chopped up rosemary. And the almond meal in the scones really does add a, a lovely chewy complexity but delicious 
nuttiness. You can't really taste the nuttiness, but it just does wonders. And then the wet ingredients are some plant milk, some maple syrup for sweetener, and then a dash of vanilla paste powder, whatever you have. A little bit of oil. I use grapeseed oil, but any light flavored oil or melted vegan butter would work. And some nut butter. And then. You know, this wasn't the best um, little contraption to be whisking all that together, but it didn't really need to be super smooth. And then you just mix, mix them wet into the dry, and it will come together into a sort of a, a dough, but not really a dough, but enough of a dough that can be worked with and made into um, scones. So you could just drop um, balls of the mixture onto a lined baking tray, or you could put in the, the doughy type mixture between two layers of baking paper, roll out to about an inch thickness and cut them out. And that's what I did, um, and it worked pretty pretty well. Um, I have a scone cutter with nice little scallop edges, well, the scallop edges didn't really stay, so anyway. Um, yeah, they don't rise um, to be like four times the size. Um, but they do rise a little bit, so you could either put them up against each other nice and snug or do it like this. And I just brush them with a bit of plant milk for a, a nice little top um, to them and then pop them in the oven. I did like turn them over for the last little bit of cooking, but you really don't have to do that. But yeah, that's them. I like to cut them in half and um, serve them with a little bit of vegan butter. And I love the subtlety of the rosemary in them. Super delish. So I should just confess now that I didn't make the lemon meringue pie in toast. Um, that's probably just kind of because my situation at the moment doesn't really leave me with the amount of time that would perhaps be needed for me to nail that one. So the second recipe and last recipe that I'm sharing is a seriously delish um, hearty spaghetti bolognese. And this is like the first recipe that Nigel makes with his mum when he's, when he's young. Um, it's from a tin. This one isn't. It's like a lentil one um, and it's fab. So we start by sautéing onion, um, carrot and celery with a bit of garlic. I did sauté in a bit of oil, but if you wanted to make this oil free then just sauté it with some water peeps. And then I added some mushrooms, a couple of bay leaves, sautéed that around until the mushrooms are sort of reduced down and um, yeah, uh, browned off a little bit. And then I added green lentils, which you can get from any supermarket. Um, and then I added a tin of tomatoes, a cup of passata, and some vegetable stock, and then some Italian herbs or mixed herbs, some nutritional yeast, coconut sugar, and a little bit of vegan Worcestershire sauce. But if you can't find that, wherever you are, or Worcestershire, however you like to call it, then you could swap it out for balsamic vinegar for a nice sort of um, flavour pack as well, or just leave it out entirely, but it's a nice, nice touch. So after it's been simmering for about 40 minutes, give it a grind of salt and pepper, or mainly just pepper because the tomatoes are quite salty. And then cook up some pasta, and I sprinkled mine with some cashew parmesan, but any sort of vegan cheese would be epic um, beyond measure on top of this. And this actually tastes even more phenomenal as more days pass. So a great meal prep thing actually. So they're the two recipes, Honey Bunches. I couldn't recommend um, them both enough truly stand by them. I'm quite happy with the results, but yes, apologies on the lemon meringue pie front, but perhaps in future I shall get round to it. I hope you enjoyed this epic spread of homey yet delightful 1960s-esque type recipes honey bunches. I'm actually quite a big Nigel Slater fan as the way he writes about food is really quite magical and often hilarious. So if you are needing a book recommendation of the vibe I have attempted to capture in this video, then I definitely recommend the book Toast, The Story of a Boy's Hunger, which is the book the film was based on and also Eating for England which I just finished and absolutely loved. As usual the full recipes will be on my blog honeybunchofoniontops.com. Catch me on Instagram between this video and the next one and I will see you super soon in the next video. Thank you so much for watching Honey Bunches. Bye! I feel a bitter taste of tears upon my tongue.